Hey folks, how's it going? Checking out more Knowing Me, Knowing You. Hopefully you guys have a fantastic day. Alright, first thing, I was able to find the DVDs and I popped it in, checked episode 1 and 2, and they are longer, so it looks like this is the the right thing that we were looking for, man. The longer episodes of Knowing Me, Knowing You. Let me move it out of the way of the thing right there so you can actually see it. But yeah, man, there's the longer episodes here. Episode 1 and 2, I think episode 1 was like 35 minutes or something like that. Episode 2, I think was like 33 minutes. So yeah. It looked pretty good, man. And I think episode three was a little bit longer, too. But I think it was only like 31 minutes or something. Could be mix them up. But, yeah, they're longer episodes. So we have the right uh, DVDs. I already have the first disc in. So I'm looking forward to checking out the longer episodes. And also, I think it was Karen in the comments who said that they make the sign slightly bigger and bigger in each episode. I think that was you who said in the comments. I did read a lot of comments. I screenshotted to, like, look at them. But, yeah, I didn't even need the screenshot to actually see it. It just is so noticeable after you say it. Like, <laughs> how big the sign is. Like, it's, there's the first episode, and then the second episode, I don't know why it's opening over here on this screen, but... And, like, how crazy the word, his name actually comes off the sign in the third episode. It's just crazy. <laughs> that they do stuff like that, like the effort they put in, just like a joke, just making a sign bigger. I did not notice that at all. I don't think I would have ever noticed it. I like that people do stuff like that, a little, I like an Easter egg or something, man. But, yeah. I actually like, I like the menu, uh, as well for the show. I think it's pretty goofy. Get the disc spooled up. Oh, it's gone. Hmm. Bonjour. Bonjour, bienvenue to Le Monde. Why am I speaking in French? Well, it's because tonight's show is coming live from Paris. What? What was once a pipe dream is now the Channel Tunnel, a big pipe. <laughs> but tonight, we're building a new construction, one that isn't vulnerable to a major terrorist attack. Let's That's do. because it's a castle, a castle of chat, or a chateau. <laughs> or, or since we're in Paris, a chatisserie. <laughs> now, when we were planning this, I was asked if I would like a French co-host to help me present the show. I said, no, no way, new plan, absolutum on none. <laughs> then they showed me her photograph, and I said, we. Oui. <laughs> I'm happy to have this woman as my co-host, subject to certain contractual stipulations. <laughs> How can I describe her? Well, if I were mad Baron Frankenpartridge with a cellar full of pickled corpses, <laughs> then I would take the clever head of Melvin Bragg, stitch it to the torso of Edith Piaf, add some legs. Uh, I'm sorry, I think this is getting quite unpleasant. Uh, <laughs> I'll just bring her on. Please welcome my co host, stupid. a delightful French madame, although she doesn't run a whole house, but, uh, <laughs> but she, she does have excellent organisational skills. Here she is, France's answer to a younger Sue Lawley, Nina Vanier. <laughs> Well, uh, you certainly smell like a Frenchman. <laughs> I mean, I mean, I mean, you're after show. It's very nice. It's very nice. It's very nice smell. Is it? Is I thought he's talking Aramis? stuff. No, Alan, it's uh, cologne. Mm, it's good. It's good smell. Thank you. What's yours? Uh, Slazenger Sports. It's, uh, <laughs> it's, just, it's the uh, it's the yeah. stick type. Don't use the I don't use the roll-on because it uh, traps your hairs. <laughs> I actually know what exactly what it is. No, knowing me, Alan Partridge, knowing you, Philip Lambert. Aha. Uh Aha. -huh. Uh -huh. Now, Philip, you have very, very kindly arranged some delicacies here for us to pick at throughout the show. Um, now, I have to say, this, this is a whole different world to the universe of hula hoops, cheesy what's-its and monster munch. <laughs> tell, tell us a bit about them. Uh, it's what I call my grand selection. Big selection. <laughs> it's a selection of hors d'oeuvres. Starters. That, <laughs> that you might find in my restaurant. I think appetizers are... Starters, same thing. These are your pieces do that all this day. Let's talk about your restaurant. Mm, good, yeah, good. What's your fundamental approach to cuisine? Well, actually, Nina, I don't have an approach. I have a reproach, mm -hmm. you know. I'm, very bored by the whole uh, restaurant industry. To me, it seems little more than a big fat pig endlessly regurgitating and consuming that which <laughs> that which 
should eat, so... <laughs> Just nibble it off each one. <laughs> without taste, without joy. You know, I, I'm not interested what Egon Rone thinks. Uh, you know, my Michelin stars, I send them back. <laughs> I don't know why I explain that. Um, now, also, to celebrate the new spirit of cooperation between our two nations, I have had a special painting commissioned by a Norwich-based artist. Um, for, uh, for my French viewers, Norwich is the Provence of Great Britain. Um, it's the best of British, the best of France, it's a bulldog with frog's legs. Yeah. I don't understand. Why can't you just take it and go? Alan Pedri. Alan Pedri. Take it and go. I don't like these chairs. By the way, if you're wondering where my normal furniture is, it's in Nîmes. Why? I don't know. Ask the French Hauliers. <laughs> Helen, uh, are you growing a moustache? No. Really? No. no. Yes, yes, yes I am. Yes, I'm growing a moustache. Is that a beard? Because hmm? I can't tell whether it's a beard or you just haven't shaved, you see? Hmm? At least I'm honest. At least I'm admitting that I'm trying to grow a moustache. All right, all right. Don't get at me. It wasn't my fault you ate the testicle. Uh, if you remember, I spat it out. Ah, yes, but there was another one. No, all, no, all I had earlier was some spinach and a volavon. No, no, no! That was weird. Right, now listen, listen, you, you, no, right, hang on, I presume you're in charge, let me tell you something, right? <laughs> There's a security guard backstage called Steve, right? Now, I promise you, if you make another sound, when you leave this area, he will hurt you. He will hurt you. Cirque de Clune. Cirque de Clune. Sorry, I just, I haven't broken wind. I, I haven't broken wind, that's them. Cirque de Clune will be doing a tour of art centres in Britain. I'm sure there'll be plenty of tickets available. <laughs> You're a disgrace. <laughs> Cirque de Clune. Uh, should be plenty of tickets available. Sanity. What are you doing there? What are you doing? You get out! Uh, it appears to be happy hour at Pete and Bernie's philosophical steakhouse. <laughs> I think you're rather rude, actually, because Nina's asked a very interesting question. What I think is that fashion is a necessity of culture, because really clothes are just things that cover up our mutual nakedness. I mean, you know, underneath our clothes, we're all of us naked. Even you, Alan. No, I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not. Yes, of course you are. No, I'm not. I've got underwear. Yes, but underneath your underwear, you are naked. No, I'm not. <laughs> of course, you have your buttocks. Oh, yes, here we go. I was, I was wondering how long it would take before the show descended into some French hidden buttock agenda. <laughs> Alan, all we are saying is that underneath your clothes, you are naked. <clears throat> no, I'm not. Now... <laughs> No, no. We're about to see some clothes from your menswear collection. Now, the theme of my collection was sports casual. Now, bearing in mind that Pete and Bernie's philosophical steakhouse is closed, <laughs> what's the theme of your collection? 
the futility of mortality. Why do I bother? <laughs> bring, bring on the models. Oh, no. Right, well, the first model is Tor. Um, Tor's... Tor's cap and shorts um, are made of bandages and his linen jacket has got real surgical stitching on it. Um, he's also got a little truss on, which is a um, sort of ironic bum bag. Is this man injured? <laughs> no, the whole collection is based on images of hospitalisation. Right, so, so the idea is you've had an operation, you want to look good on the ward, <laughs> that, that's what you wear. No. No, they're for wearing anyway. You wear them on the street. He's wearing slippers. So the only man I know who wears slippers on the street is called Dougie. <laughs> he wanders round Norwich shopping precincts with a Cornish pasty in his hand, shouting, get away, it's a bomb. <laughs> he's insane. Well, maybe he's sane and we're all mad. Anyway, the next model... Is a And um, the next one is Newman. With humans got a, a more formal. She is out of control. Look. That's beautiful, Yvonne. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. And um, here you see, I've broken up the classic lines of the suit with a saline drip attached to an umbrella, and with a pair of brogues, one of which is orthopedic. He looks like he's been in a car crash. <laughs> Final model who's coming on now is Matt. Now here I'm playing with ideas of constriction and freedom. So just as the plaster boots here impede, the bandage kilt liberates. This waistcoat covered in corn plasters. Mm. Are they used? Oh, for no, goodness' of sake! Not. Don't be so ludicrous. So I'm, I'm being told I'm ludicrous by Mrs. Whippyhead. <laughs> That's the end of my collection. Yvonne, it's a triumph. Yes, thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Sorry, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, I'm, I'm, I'm confused. I've got to ask a couple of questions. Um, this, this man here, what's this round his midriff? It's a blood bag. What if it bursts? <laughs> well, you mop it up. What with? What with? With the eye patch. It's not a problem. I mean, what if your nose bleeds? You know, what if your, your, what if your arm bursts? Arm bursts? <laughs> Lady? What if your arm bursts? Well, so I've heard of a nosebleed, but... Uh, in, in my 14 years of professional broadcasting, including three years as a hospital radio disc jockey, I've never had anyone come up to me and say, my arm's just burst. <laughs> Could you play a dedication? Well, come on, now, then. You've just got me on You're here to read it. meant to be with you. No, 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 no. I'll show you. I will show you. You with the orthopaedic shoe. What's his name? Newman. Newman. You, you just walk up here and then walk back again, easy as you like. <laughs> that man has no dignity. <laughs> Dignity. No. That, that is dignity. <laughs> More or less. Oh, no. No one will wear these clothes. They look rubbish. <laughs> ordinary people do not like those clothes. I like those clothes. I like them too. You're not ordinary, you're French. <laughs> it's a bogus. Glenn, Glenn, the old mate, Glenn. Those clothes, are they rubbish or what? I like them. Quite nice. What? You traitor. <laughs> there stands Judas Ponder. <laughs> Check in his pockets, you'll find 30 pieces of silver. Except you won't, because he spent them all last night at the Folly Bergere. <laughs> what are you two staring at? You're like the steptoe wives. I think you mean the Stepford wives. I thought you French were good at chatting. I thought that's all you did all day, sitting outside your brasseries, sipping your cappuccinos, chomping on onions and going, oh, he, ho, he, ho. Oh, come on. <laughs> You're just oh. being racist. That is not racist. French people chomp on onions and go, oh, he, ho, he, ho. That's a fact. <laughs> you, the accordion man, were you there? Mm. <laughs> Everyone except you, Alan. 
cool Glenn, thing. Why didn't you invite me? I left a message. Right, Glenn, I'm going to ask you a question. And I want you to give me an honest and truthful answer. Did you leave a message for me last night? No. <laughs> Bogus cold blooded. Thank you. Quite honestly, Alan, I didn't think they'd let you in. You know, there was a sign outside there saying no jeans, no trainers, no sports casual wear. <laughs> Glenn. <laughs> it's just a joke. Just a joke. Huh? Here's a good joke. Here's a good joke. So you'll like this one. There's this bloke called Glenn Ponder. He's playing jazz synthesizer in a Norwich wine bar. <laughs> in walks Alan Partridge. Alan gives him a big break on national television. Glenn's pleased. Glenn gets lippy. Glenn gets the sack. Dang. What, what do you mean? You're sacked. Cold you thing. are sacked. I'm sacking you. In fact, it's happened. It's over. It's already ha You are a sacked man. You've been sacked. You're the subject of a sacking. I want you off these premises in ten minutes. Knowing me, Alan Partridge, sacking you, Glenn Partridge. <laughs> 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 and on that bombshell, Dang. it's time for me to say, knowing me, Alan Partridge, knowing you, Monsieur Testicle, knowing you, Pantomime Cow, <laughs> and then you, Ms. Oh, ha Good night, Arriba Dirce, and aha! It was good, man. Some of the jokes I missed because I didn't know what, the, what was going on with them complaining about the dog and the mad cow disease thing and who gave who first. Some, it says something to do with the history or something. Like, don't send your stray dogs down the tunnel and we won't send our d cows. I don't know. I can't remember exactly what he was saying, but I missed that. I didn't know what's going on there. And then also it looks like he the, the sign was missing. I wanted to see if he got bigger in this episode. The sign was gone. Oh boy, he is kind of playing and stuff. If he pulled him out of like a dead end job, he didn't like it, like a low end jazz bar, and gave him this good job. He kind of he talking stuff. I don't think you should be afraid to like make jokes and stuff with your boss to the point where you think you can always get fired. But will you not like invite him to like a you know a night out and you're going out with a bunch of strangers that you're probably never going to see again and you leave your boss out without even attempting to invite him if he gets kicked out or he isn't allowed in then that just let that happen but but don't not invite him if he did these things for you and gave you this opportunity even if he's a little uh, annoying so he did kind of play himself you know he played himself in that situation when he's taking the side of people that he'll probably never see again who is who have never gave him um an opportunity and probably you know i never give him uh the time of day again you know so the dude kind of played himself in that situation that was a really funny joke though they say knowing me Alan Partridge is firing you that was, that was a really good joke the other few jokes in here that I, that I missed, man, that just went over my head. I didn't know. Some of it was just, like, French stuff that I didn't know what he was talking about. Another one, like, that tunnel thing. Yeah, there was just some stuff I just didn't know. So the jokes went over my head, unfortunately. Uh, but there are a decent amount of ones that I did get. And the fashion stuff was definitely goofy. I thought that was a distributor cap that she had on her uh, chest. And also looked like maybe spark plugs and cables and uh, jumper cables as well that she was walking out with. Terrible freaking fashion. That was pretty funny. Like, him making fun of her fashion because it was terrible. There's a lot of fashion stuff that people would never wear, wear daily that just looks freaking awful as well. I think Alan knows he looks goofy in shorts and that's why he was doing it when he was doing his little fashion show. <laughs> In those shorts in particular, like way above his knees, he just looks really goofy, so it's funny. Just <laughs> with the socks pulled up, it's fantastic, man. God bless him, man. He just looks so goofy in those shorts. I thought that was fantastic. Oh my goodness, I look goofy in shorts too. Like, I, I look goofy, and it's probably because I'm so tall. I don't know, like, if I wore shorts that are, like, way below my knees, I'd probably be fine. But wearing shorts way up here with my really long legs, I just would look so goofy, man. I would look like a basketball player from the 70s. Have you ever seen, like, black basketball players from the 70s with those really, like, black knees? <laughs> those tube socks. Like, dude, what's going on there, man? That's what it just looks, it just looks crazy. But to each your own, wear whatever you want, man. But he he looked goofy. It was funny. That was a, a nice little goofy fashion show he had going on. The whole miming clown thing was weird. I wonder if that's a weird, if that's a real category that people do, like that. I don't know, miming sex clown thing. It probably is. There, there's something for everything out there these days. When he called her Mrs. Whippy, I feel like I heard that somewhere or I saw it in a show or something. I, but or probably not. It just probably just, it just sounds like ice cream, just like the top of an ice cream cone. That's what it sounds like. So I assume this way he's making fun of that the top of her head looks like an ice cream cone, and I'm assuming it's a company. 
an ice cream company, and I feel like I've seen it somewhere or somebody mentioned it in the show. I just don't know for sure. But that's why I assume he was saying like that she looks like the type of ice cream cone, like uh, Mrs. Whippy. I think it's a company called that. Or maybe there's a whipped cream company called that too. Or he be, could be, be calling saying she's a whip head and she's crazy because some people like, you know, suck the stuff out of whipped cream cans and it makes them high. Saying she's high because her freaking fashion is terrible. I don't know. Either way, they're all funny. It, any, any way you play it, it could be funny because, yeah. But most likely, I think she's talking about, he's talking about her hair looks like ice cream. The swirl. That's what it looked like. But yeah, all around, man, I enjoyed this. I thought this was a, an entertaining episode. I'm glad I found the longer episodes as well on this DVD. The runtime, it was longer than this one. This one was 35 minutes compared to the 29 minute when I had it first. So I like an extra six minutes out of this one. Yeah, folks, that is it. That is all for this one. Hopefully you guys are happy, safe, and healthy. I'll see you in the next one. Later.